Hi everyone, welcome back to another EngSci recap video. My name is Jason. I just finished my second year of engineering science at the University of Toronto. And today I'm going to be going over a course called ECE 253 Digital and Computer Systems. So ECE 253 was a course I took uh, in my fall term of second year. And when I took the class, the, there were two professors, Professor uh, Natalie and Wright Jurger and Professor Jason Anderson. So the main course topics included uh, very basic, I guess, uh, we started with very basic uh, digital logic uh, ideas, uh, as well as how we represent information in different ways. So that includes binary and hexadecimal. We learned about logic gates, multiplexers, and combinational circuits. Verilog uh, was a big part of the lab component of this course. We learned about optimizing uh, logic expressions using Carnot maps. Uh, we also learned about sequential circuits, so RS latches, gated D latches, uh, and then how we could use those to construct, construct D and T flip-flops. Learn about counters and shift registers, finite state machines, processors, and ARM assembly. And within that, uh, we learned about subroutines and the stack, uh, input and output, as well as interrupts. So Verilog and uh, ARM assembly were the two main uh, lab components of this course, uh, where we had to learn how to uh, write code in these languages. Um, and to solve problems with them. So one of the questions, so I'm going to go through a question uh, from the midterm that I took on October 14th, 2021. I'll be going over question seven. And this question goes over shift registers, D flip flops, uh, two to one multiplexers. Uh, and there was also some Verilog. Uh, and specifically uh, within the Verilog, uh, we were expected to know how to use always blocks, non-blocking assignment, uh, as well as the XOR uh, function. So this is the statement uh, of part A of the question, and I know there is a lot of reading to do, but I promise it's not uh, as complicated as it seems. The essence of the question uh, is basically we want to design a circular shift register. And this circular shift register uh, has four D flip-flops. And uh, in addition, we need to have a skip and a load input. So what these do is load is very simple. When load is uh, true, the values on inputs uh, D0 to D3 are loaded into the flip-flops at the next rising clock edge. And when load uh, is zero or false, um, the shift register behaves normally. Um, so what that would mean is there were there are two possible behaviors. Uh, so when skip is zero, the values in the register will shift right by one position at the rising clock edge. So Q0 go to Q1, Q1 to Q2, and so on and so forth. And Q3 would go back to Q0, which is why it's a circular shift register. But if skip is one, then the values will shift to the right by two positions. So Q0 would, be, would go to Q2 rather than Q1. Q1 to go to Q3, and Q3 would go to Q1 rather than Q0. So it's still circular, but we're skipping one shift register when skip is true. So we essentially want to complete a circuit diagram to achieve the behavior, and we're allowed to use any gates or multiplexers that uh, we've learned about. So this was uh, the original schematic that was given as part of the test. Um, this is an example of a multiplexer structure that we could use to implement um, our uh, input to the to the D flip flop. So um, if you're unfamiliar, basically what a D flip flop does is the D flip flop will store the value, uh, the the input value, 
um, on the next rising clock edge. So the value that we want to store, however, uh, we need to know what our values of skip and load are in order to select the input. So for example, um, if load is zero, then that means we want uh, one of the, we want our input value to be one of the stored values from a previous register. But if load is one, then simply our input will be um, either D0, D1, D2, or D3. Those are the values that we want to load into the registers. If skip is zero, then our input value, uh, we want it to be the stored value from the register one position to the left. And if skip is one, then we want to load in the value that's um, two positions to the left. So this is how we would do it with a multiplexer structure. And as you can see, we can apply this structure to each of our D flip flops. So for example, if we look at this uh, D flip flop in the top left, this corresponds uh, to our output Q0 uh, or our stored value Q0. So Q0, when load is one, Q0 uh, will be replaced by D0. And this corresponds to the load value uh, at the next rising clock edge. But when load is zero, that means we want the circular shift register to uh, loop through its values. And so when skip is zero, that means we want Q0 to be replaced by the value that is one position to the left, which would be Q3. But if skip is one, we want the value to be replaced by uh, the value stored two positions to the left, which would be Q2. And we can apply this logic to every single uh, D flip-flop. And it's important to note that uh, each of these D flip-flops is going to be connected to the same clock. So they're not sort of just independent of each other. They work in tandem. Uh, they're connected to the same clock, but for simplicity, um, I decided not uh, to connect all of them, just to just makes the diagram uh, less cluttered. It's also important to note that all the skip inputs are going to be the same and all the load inputs are going to be the same. Uh, furthermore, uh, the outputs, um, the Q0, for example, will act as an input to two of the other uh, multiplexers, uh, but these connections are obviously not drawn. I do not want a whole screen of wires. So that was part A, and this is part B, which again talks about D flip-flops, but this time we want to uh, represent them in code using Verilog. So we're asked to complete the Verilog to describe the behavior of the circuit that's shown on the screen. So uh, we're given a module FF circuit with inputs A, B, and clock, and an output Z, which is shown here. So A and B are both inputs to two separate D flip-flops. Notice that there are three flip-flops, all of them connect to the same clock. Um, and the outputs of uh, the two initial flip-flops uh, are connected to this gate. This is an XOR gate. Um, their outputs are XOR, which acts as the input to the third and final D flip-flop, uh, which is connected to the output Z. So for the purposes of writing code, I've included uh, these two variables q0 and q1 which will act as intermediate values which we can perform the xor on so uh, excuse the blurry verilog but this is uh, a solution to the problem so again we have our declaration of our inputs and our output but i've also included two reg variables q0 and q1 and the reason we use reg instead of wire is because uh, we're working with D flip-flops that uh, are constantly updating. We don't want to use blocking assignment. We want to use non-blocking assignment, uh, which would correspond to a reg variable. Again, as I mentioned, we haven't always block. We are checking for when the clock reaches a rising edge. And when we get a rising edge, we enter this always block. And within the always block, uh, we have three non-blocking assignments, which means that they happen simultaneously um, and they don't happen in any sequential order like a blocking assignment would. So for example, we have logic that says that our output uh, of the final D flip-flop 
would be assigned q0, x, or q1. And it's important to note that this caret is the symbol uh, in Verilog that represents the XOR operator. Q0 would be assigned the input A uh, through that D flip-flop, and Q1 would be assigned the input B uh, through that D flip-flop. So this is a very basic um, circuit that we have been able to represent in Verilog. So before I end off this video, I'd like to make some quick acknowledgements. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Professor Enright Jurger and professors, uh, Professor Anderson for the course and the midterm content. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the people who made this Beamer template. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.